Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I keep telling you it's because you're using the wrong tools. You can't very well support someone remotely if you can't see their desktop. You gotta install software that'll run cross-platform, easy to use, easy for you to send a link off to the person that you want to support remotely. Go to Assist Express, you know, they're the company that helps support our community. So we're going to show people how to use it. Can, can we do that? Pick, you're going to be good with this? Then you can be off and lick whatever body parts of your own that you want. Hi, everybody. Go to assist.com slash Chris is where you can sign up for a trial of the uh, GoToAssist service. And it works on Mac OS X or Windows. And you can connect to uh, different operating systems. Right now, when I said, hey, we're going to do a, a GoToAssist session, I threw it out there. Uh, just, it was about an hour ago or so. Got tons of emails coming in saying, hey, Chris, uh, could you help with this on my desktop? Could you help with that? And I ultimately decided to go with Danny Minnick's desktop. Because he said, hey, I've got some questions about MS Config. So I fired up uh, the GoToAssist software and gave Danny a URL. I simply copied it to the clipboard. He gave it to me right there in the interface. He clicked it, and then a couple of seconds later, I was viewing his desktop. And I had immediate control of his desktop. He's running Windows 7, by the way. Me, Mac OS X. So I, I didn't really change uh, too many preferences here. I did remove his desktop uh, background just to make things just a little snappier. Uh, he can hear me because he's watching my live video feed. Uh, I haven't connected, you know, by way of phone, which of course I could do as well. I've got a little chat window open. He says, I'm guessing you can't hear me. And yes, that is correct. I can. But I was uh, sharing the screen uh, automatically right here. And you can see it, it. Well, I don't know if you can see it is running Windows 7. So uh, go ahead, Danny. And uh, uh, let's, let's see here. We're going to click the start menu. I'm going to actually go to search programs and files and type in MS config and it should pop up. We're going to go ahead and hit enter because that was the only tool that showed up. MS config is a, well it's a system configuration tool that allows you to troubleshoot. I would not recommend going in here if you're not sure what's going on. Really. So uh, since Danny can hear me right now, you, you good Pixie? You good so far? Easy to use. Uh, go ahead and flip to the Tools tab. I want to show you the, uh, this in case you didn't know. Uh, it'll uh, show you a few of the uh, tools that come with Windows that may not you know, be available in the Start menu uh, with any immediacy, uh, like going in there and changing UAC settings, opening the Action Center, Event Viewer Program, System Properties, etc. It'll show you uh, where they're actually located, the, the path uh, uh, where the executable happens to be located, and then you can launch from there as well. Now go ahead and flip over to the Start Up tab. This is where I recommend going uh, after you install software. Uh, sometimes software will you know, throw a shortcut into the startup menu or potentially even a registry entry. Uh, this is where you also have to be very, very careful. If you go in and you remove something, it's usually safe to do it this way, disabling. Don't disable everything because you never know what you're going to disable. Uh, but I would recommend doing it one at a time. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and show you here. We've got QuickTime, NVIDIA, Java, Zune, Logitech, AVG, MobileMe, iTunes, Google Update, etc, etc, etc. So let's go ahead and, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and disable QuickTime simply by, and he's controlling the mouse cursor, I can as well. Uh, I disabled QuickTime because you really don't need that launching on startup. You don't. You could if you wanted to, but it's just it's one more program that would have to load. So we just take the check mark out. Uh, I've always taken the check mark out of NVIDIA's software. I've never had an issue with that. I'll go ahead and leave that intact. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take out the, the, the Java application on startup because you want your startup to be fast. Uh, you're probably not going to be on a website that's using Java uh, all the time, certainly not uh, on a regular basis. So just take out Java if, if you have it there. Take out QuickTime. Uh, they're just launching tools that make it allegedly quicker to access the program when, it's, it, when it is called. You okay there, Pixie? Bless you. Uh, is it me? Is it my clothes? Are you allergic to my clothes? Can't help you there. So uh, let's go ahead and keep going down. Uh, okay, so we've taken out two. Java, by the way, is a huge uh, performance hog. Uh, Logitech, you should probably leave that in there. Uh, there's the mobile me setup, iTunes, Google Updates, Skype. You could probably also take out, uh, unless, of course, you, uh, you use that all the time. I, I would actually recommend taking the checkmark out, unless you have it open all the time. I would recommend taking the checkmark out. Uh, but then again, 
I'm the type of person that will only launch something when I need to launch it. And then usually, uh, the way that Windows handles programs when it starts is it loads them all at the same time. That's the biggest problem with Windows, is that it doesn't just go one after the other after the other, which would make it fast, is it tries to access them all at the same time. And at least that's, that's the way I've always experienced it. So it makes for a slower startup, especially with these pigs that are getting loaded in the background. So if you don't need to launch something on startup, don't do it. You know, wait till everything loads on startup and then go through and, 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 and launch one after another after another. It's, it's going to actually be a faster experience rather than trying to launch two programs in tandem. Uh, you know, launching one after the other. Doesn't matter how fast your computer is, likely you're going to be uh, bottlenecked by uh, something like your disk speed, which we've talked about before, especially in relation to uh, SSDs, which we've also talked about before. Right, Pixie? Yes, we have. So there's the MS config tool. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and press OK and apply. You know, there's, there's a few ways that we can, you know, set the wheels in motion. Because again, Danny, this is your computer, and there's nothing really wrong with it. He was just curious to know my thoughts on what he might be able to remove. And uh, you may be able to remove iTunes, um, unless, of course, you have an iPhone. But he's got a zoom, too, it seems, right there. So I, I, I zoomed in on his screen so you could see exactly what I was seeing. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out again. Now, that, the zooming feature, that's, a, that's Mac OS X. That's not GoToAssist. GoToAssist allows me to control everything on his desktop. Now, imagine if something was really messed up. I could go into his desktop, make the changes, chat with him, and do a variety of other things, if I wanted to, using the software. Nice, simple, easy. Go to assist.com slash Chris, C-H-R-I-S. Danny, thank you for showing us your desktop. Uh, go ahead and do whatever you want to do on your desktop now and you know, show people what it is that you like running on a regular basis while I take everybody out. I mean, not take everybody out. Literally, I'm just saying close the video at this point. Oh, there's his chat room. Of course, this is the, that chat room here. Is, he's pulling it up on the screen. My email address, chris at perillo.com, will be doing this on a very regular basis. So uh, you may be tapped on the shoulder, the virtual shoulder, saying, hey, maybe I can help you with that problem remotely using the software, you know, as a demonstration. Um, feel free to drop me a line, though, generally speaking. I may end up forwarding you to our community at geeks.perillo.com. Then, of course, we also have the chatter, which is on Danny's screen, but it's also on that screen. Here, in fact, let me, uh, let me zoom in here and show you. See, look at that. Isn't that crazy? His, his chat, my chat, we're just full of chat here. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, typically talking tech at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.